6.2 radian measure and angles on the Cartesian plane. So this is just converting degrees into radians. So you're going to be using radians all the time. So I have a unit circle here. Remember a unit circle is just describing a unit with a radius of one. So as you go around the circle here, you can see how far it is to go. For instance, pi over six units or pi over four units which of course would be 45, this one is 30, this one is 60. Okay, so remember your special triangles because every time you see this word exact, you have to use exact values. This means don't grab your calculator, use your head. So remember we had um, a triangle with two equal sides, also known as an isosceles triangle. So we said, well, these are the same side. We'll call them 1, 1, 1, square root 2. And then we had, this was the angle, which of course would be 45 degrees. Remember that for a triangle with same side lengths, two same side lengths, right angle, these angles are both 45. Or now we're going to call it pi over 4. It's pi over 4. This is also pi over 4 over here. And you'll see you will get the same ratios. Okay, so that's one of your special triangles. The other one, of course, came from the equilateral triangle. So remember, you don't have to memorize these. Just understand what you're doing. So you had an equilateral triangle. That gave you 60 degrees here. And 60 is pi over 3. Remember, 180 divided by 3, 60 degrees. So that means this one up here is pi over 6. The long side or the hypotenuse, they called it 2. So if you cut it in half, this becomes 1. So you have 2, 1, and the square root of 3. You should be able to draw those very easily. Okay, so the question is, what is the exact value of the cos of 5 pi over 6? So remember that the first thing you need to do is figure out where 5 pi over 6 is on your triangle, on your unit circle, so that you can decide what sign it's going to have. Sign, like S-I-G-N sign. Okay, so 5 pi over 6, the easiest way to remember these is that you know this is going to be 6 pi over 6 over here, right? Because that's pi, which is 180 degrees. So if this is 0, this is 6 pi over 6, all the way around would be 12 pi over 6 or 2 pi. So if you put 6 pi over 6 here and you go back 1 pi over 6, you'd be 5 pi over 6. Then you need to remember your cast rule, C-A-S. In this quadrant, only sign is positive, so that means the cos of 5 pi over 6 is the same thing as the negative cos of pi over 6. So that's, you want to write equivalent expressions. I'm going to go over a bunch of them here for you until you get it all figured out. Okay, so basically you just want one of these every time. I'll show you as we go along. Okay, the negative cos of pi over 6. So pi over 6 up here, the cos of pi over 6, we want adjacent over hypotenuse. So katoa, A-H adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's root 3 over 2, and it is going to be negative, negative root 3 over 2, and that's the exact value of the cos of 5 pi over 6. How easy is that? Okay, let's look at some equivalent expressions. I'm going to bring my little triangle, my little unit circle paper over here so that we can see it easier. Okay, so anytime you're asked for an equivalent expression, they want to know what is the related acute angle and the sign that that um, trigonometric ratio has in that quadrant. So first I look at tan 5 pi over 6. Where is 5 pi over 6? Well, we just did it. It's right here. So all the way around here. And I know from my cast rule, let me just scribble that over here that when I'm in the second quadrant here, tan is going to be negative. So right away, my answer is going to be the negative tan, and the related acute angle is just pi over 6. Okay, the negative tan of pi over 6. 
I'm going to not going to find the exact values for you. I'm just getting you used to writing equivalent expressions, which you will do often, and you need to know how to do that as we get further into trig. Okay, so the cos of 5 pi over 4. So it's going to be cos pi over 4, and all I have to do is figure out if it's going to be positive or negative. So 5 pi over 4, remember this would be 4 pi over 4 here for 1 pi. So 5 pi over 4 is going to put me right here. So I'm going to go all the way around here in that quadrant. Only tangent is positive. So this has to be the negative cos of pi over 4. Now take a look at these ones and try them on your own. Stop the video, come back, and I'm going to continue with the lesson and you can see if you're right. So the sine of 11 pi over 12, this would be 12 pi over 12, right? 12 pi over 12, 24 pi over 12 over here, and you could divide that into halves again to get the um, this value here in this one. So 11 pi over 12, I want pi over 12, that would be its related acute, the size of its related acute angle. It has to be sine, and I need to know is sine positive in this quadrant, and yes it is. So that makes it the sine of pi over 12, C-A-S. Okay, the cosecant of 7 pi over 6. So 7 pi over 6, the related acute to that is going to be pi over 6. These are even easier than doing the um, degree ones, isn't it? So the cosecant of pi over 6, but I want to know when I'm at 7 pi over 6. So 6 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6. I'm going to be here in that quadrant. Cosecant would be negative because only tangent is positive. So it's the negative cosecant of pi over 6. Oh, just rolling along. Cotan of 3 pi over 4, the related acute angle is going to be pi over 4. And all I need to do is figure out if the cotangent is positive or negative in the quadrant at 3 pi over 4. This would be 4 pi over 4. 3 pi over 4 would be 2 here. So I have only sine positive there. So this is the negative cotan pi over 4. If you get really good at these, it's going to make your life easy. I, I guarantee that. I'm going to move this right out of the way here. Well, maybe right here. Need a little more room. Okay, so the secant of 5 pi over 3. Okay, 5 pi over 3, the related acute is going to be pi over 3. It's still going to be secant, but I need to know, is it positive or negative? Secant is the reciprocal of cos. All right, so I'm looking for C, not S. Okay, so C, cosine. 1 over the cos is secant. So 5 pi over 3, this is going to be 3 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. So I'm going to be in this quadrant here where cos is positive, and so this is going to be positive. You could also say this is the same as 1 over the cos of pi over 3, which would make it easy for you to evaluate using special triangles. Or if you're smart, you can just flip them when you see secant. Okay, the cos of 4 pi over 3. So 1 would be pi over 3, the acute angle. So it's going to be cos of pi over 3. And I need to know, is 4 pi over 3, is that going to be positive or negative? This is 3 pi over 3. 4 pi over 3 would be to here. So 4 pi over 3, I'm in quadrant 3. It's only tangent, so this has to be negative. And finally... I hope you've got it all figured out by now. The sine of 7 pi over 4. Um, this is 4 pi over 4. This is 8 pi over 4. Back 1 would be 7 pi over 4 would be to here. So all the way around to here. I'm in the cosine quadrant. Only cos is positive. So this has to be the negative sine of pi over 4. Okay, so I hope that helped you. You need to know how to flip um, find an equivalent expression and um, you're going to use that a lot later on. So make sure you got that, that nailed. Okay, 
Similar questions to what you did previously. There is a point on a terminal arm. This is from 7F in your textbook. And the terminal arm point is 6 and minus 1. Find the radian value on the interval. Okay, this doesn't say exact value, and it's not an exact value, because you'll see we're going to have to use our calculators. So the first thing you want to do is find the point. So let's say this is 6 and minus 1 right here. So I know I'm in in this quadrant, um, and that means that I'm coming all the way around like this like that and I want to know what the radian value is on the interval from 0 to 2 pi from 0 to 2 pi okay so 6 and minus 1 this is x this is y so which trigonometric ratio should I use if I have y and x and you should say tan because the tan of theta is y over x and y is minus 1 and x is 6. Or is it the other way around? Well, we know exactly where it is. So there can only be one solution here. We can only be in this quadrant. If we were given the ratio, say I said, oh, the tan of theta equals minus 1 over 6. You don't know whether the 1 was negative or the 6 was negative, right? So in that case, you could have had a solution here and one here. But this isn't true because they gave you the point. You're in this quadrant. There's only one solution between 0 and 2 pi. So don't make that mistake. Okay, so tan theta is negative 1 over 6. That means that tan, if we do the reciprocal of that in our calculators, equals, and we're going to find the radian measure. Okay, so let me just grab my, my fancy calculator and I'm going to show you. So I'm going to do second tan and it was negative 1 over 6. Negative 1 divided by 6. Don't forget the negative is this little button down here. And I get minus, okay, just a minute where I get, equals negative 0.16. Five, one. That's to four decimal places. That's pretty good. Okay, but that means I've measured this angle, right? The negative angle. I don't want a negative angle. My domain is 0 to 2 pi. So that means I need to know how far is it all the way around here. And that would be, so theta is equal to 2 pi minus 0.1651. And if you do that on your calculator, you should use um, you should use the two pi button. Like go, uh, that's clear. So go two pi minus point one six five. Oh, I think I put one three. I did. It's really hard for me to see this uh, on the calculator because the light's funny. Two pi. Even there, I can't see it. Two pi minus. 0.1651 equals, and I get 2.9765. That's to four decimal places. That doesn't make sense, does it? I don't think I got two. Oh, I only had one pi. Of course, that's not making sense. Okay, back up. Okay, well, you know what I'm doing here anyway. So I need 2 times pi minus 0.1651, and I get 6 point here. That's better. You should, like, literally think about it afterwards. Does this make any sense? Okay, approximately 6.1181 radians. Okay. Determine the radian value of theta if theta is between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, now I said here, check the given domain because in your textbook, number 6, I think they say between pi and 2 pi. So that's going to restrict your solution to only one answer. But this would mean there's two solutions. So let's do one with two solutions because I think it's important that you, you, can, do, um, you can do one where there's two. 
So again, we know that tan of theta is y over x. So that means y is equal to negative 7 and x is equal to 24. Or it could mean y is equal to 7 and x is equal to negative 24. Right, so if I did a quick sketch of that, you'd say, okay, so if I did 24 and minus 7, so let's say that was here, I could also have another point that was negative 24 and 7, right? Negative 24, 7. So that would give me two solutions. So I'd have one angle to here and another angle to here. So you have to be aware that if you're given a domain between 0 and 2 pi and you, you don't know which one was negative, right? That's the rule of math. Okay, so let's, um, let's evaluate this. So we're going to go tan negative 1 minus 7 over 24 equals. So I'm going to do second tan uh, minus 7 divided by 24 and I get minus 2.838, minus approximately, minus 2.2838. So there's two, four decimal places. But I know that's not what I'm looking for because again, my domain is positive, it has to be between zero and two pi. This is a negative radian answer. Oh, I should also mention that you want to make sure that your calculator is in radians. Remember all those times, grade 10, when you had your calculator in radians and you got all the wrong answers? Well, now you want all those wrong answers. So on your calculator, it would be under mode. And you see how radians is lit up here. You would have radians on your, your calculator somewhere. All calculators are a little different on how you find it, but make sure you're in radians this time, or else, of course, you wouldn't get a decimal answer. Okay, so I have negative 0.2838, but I know that that means that theta is going to be equal to pi minus 0.2838. That will give me this first angle here, because this is pi here, and the other one is going to be 2 pi minus that angle and theta equals 2 pi minus 0.2838. Okay, so um, this one comes out to approximately 2.86, and this comes out to approximately 6.00. Okay, so that's all you're doing in this unit. It's not anything new to you other than the fact that you're working with radians. And again, I highly recommend that you take the time to understand what equivalent expressions are and that you can do these easily. Okay, good luck.